like to call to order the Tuesday, August 15, 2017, Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on August 10th at 2 p.m. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. All right. We got 22. 22. There are 22 supervisors present. Thank you. Approval of the July 18th, 2017 journal. Supervisor Winkle. Motion to approve, it's published. Thank you, Supervisor Winkle. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any discussion? Please push your I or nay button. Motions approved unanimously. I got lost somewhere in the shuffle. Yeah, there we go. Comes in there now. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's <laughs> why so I'm trying to do two things at once. <laughs> Excuse me. Consideration of appointments by county administrator. Aging and Disability Advisory Committee reappointments Daryl DeMontier and Carol Zoran. And Transportation Coordinating Committee reappointment Derek Mensch. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I concur with the appointments of the administrator. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Koch. I support. Thank you, Supervisor Koch. Any discussion? Please push your I or nay button. Appointments are approved unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. We have none. Public addresses. We have none. Letters, communications, and announcements. I have some resolutions. One from Outagamie Board of Supervisors supporting proposed legislation to reduce fines for marijuana crimes. We'll refer that to the Law Committee. Next, I have a resolution from the Dork County Board of Supervisors opposing, opposing the IKEA Resources Back 40 Mine Project in Michigan. We'll refer that to the Prey Committee. Next, I have a resolution from Wood County Board of Supervisors regarding legislative redistricting. We'll receive that for information. We've received that before. And finally, from Wood County, I have a resolution opposing the repeal of Wisconsin prevailing wage law. We'll also receive that for information as we received that before. That is all. Thank you, John. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. I am going to give a brief update on the transportation complex, a brief update on the half percent sales tax revenue, and a brief update on the 2018 budget development process. First, the transportation complex. Just have, I think, eight or nine slides here. This is since the last county board meeting. Next slide. Um, as you can see, we have yet to clear the area for the transportation complex. There's a, a lot of trees to remove and not much has happened. Does anybody recognize that area? That is the uh, route to Rocky Knoll and the water tower. So over the course of the last few weeks, they have been clearing brush and preparing the, uh, where the boring's gonna go to hook up to Rocky Knoll's water tower, which was very beneficial for the transportation complex as well as Rocky Knoll because as upgrades are made in the future, uh, that'll be a shared cost, so we'll have more people benefiting from that water supply. Next slide. 
This is what, unfortunately, a lot of the workers have been dealing with over the course of the last three, four weeks. A lot of rain, a lot of water, and it has uh, caused some delays. In fact, Chairman Wagner and I were just in a meeting the other day getting an update on progress and safety, and uh, at this point we think we're about four weeks delayed in part because of uh, dealing with something we have no control over. Next slide. Um, we've got a lot of water also in the bu buildings themselves because of course the roofs aren't fully in place yet. So it's just been a wet building site, though fortunately because of the good work of the trans Transportation Department staff, you know, a lot of gravel was brought into that area. So it can handle a lot of rain and it tends to dry out relatively quickly. Next slide. In fact, that same photo where it was that wet has now uh, been dried out sufficiently where we're now bringing in gravel and preparing to pour concrete in the main transportation complex where all the trucks will be. Next slide, please. This is an aerial shot. Anybody know what that building is there? Salt. The salt shed. Went up in about two weeks. Amazing how quickly with that span creep, uh, how quickly those buildings go up. So the salt shed is now in play. They're preparing the foundation for another cold storage area. Next slide. And they are fortunately, as weather permits, getting that roof on. And good progress is being made. Next slide. So there you see the entire complex. And as you know, this is the, the main area where all the trucks will be housed. This is the main area, the shop area, where a lot of the maintenance will be done. That's our salt shed in the back. And this smaller area up front will be where administration is. Next slide, please. Fuel tanks are going in. We have a $15,000, 15,000 capacity diesel, 6,000 gas, and 4,000 waste oil. So that are those three tanks right here. And believe it or not, those are three workers in that hole right now preparing. So that's in play. Next slide. So there you go. If you haven't had a chance, please go out there and take a look. We are, as I said, a little late because of weather conditions, but we continue to be under budget and looking good. Real credit to Greg and his team, Jim to Beast and his team. A lot of good people working on that. The other topic I wanted to touch on was the sales tax. And as you know, about a year ago, in order to support our 450 miles of county roads, 73 bridges, be fiscally responsible and make sure that we were maintaining rather than having more expensive fixes down the road, uh, we now have a goal to do a minimum of 30 miles of paving annually. And thanks to your support, the half percent sales tax was implemented and it has not only allowed us to hit that target, we are on pace with over 20 miles paved already. A lot of good work is happening throughout the county. It's helped us with reducing borrowing, reducing our debt service, providing direct property tax relief, and we are the only county in the, in the state that's sharing some of that revenue with our local municipalities, and it's been working out well. So on your desk this evening is a, um, high-end spreadsheet that shows how much revenue Sheboygan County has received to date. And I want to give credit where credit's due. Wendy put this together and she compared us with a few counties that receive sales tax revenue, Fond du Lac, Sauk, and Walworth. And then as you know, we had delayed uh, implementation. It, it went effect January 1st, but we don't start re receiving the dollars until February, March, so we didn't get full a month revenue in January or February. But as you can see in the bottom line for 2017, we received $586,000 in March, 556 in April, bumped up to 817,000 in June. And as you go along that line, you'll see to date through July, we received 3.6 million. We budgeted 6.75 million. So that was a Best estimate based on projections from, I believe, uh, the UW Extension and perhaps the Department of Revenue. I think we had diff two different sources and we split the difference and we're on pace to hit our budgeted amount of 6.75 million. So we're looking good 
And as I, as I said, a lot of work is being done as a result of that. If you look at the comparables with Walworth, Sock, and Fond du Lac, uh, and if you look at that chart, which can kind of throw you at first, but we are the purple graph, or the, the, the purple, uh, what is that? Bar graph. Bar graph. We're the purple bar, for goodness sake. And if you look at that and compare us to even Sauk, with everything going on in Sauk, with all the tourism there, uh, we've had better performance. So I, I think so far so good. We're planning to budget $9 million for 2018, which we think is achievable, reasonable, and of course we'll be sharing or plan to share with the support of the the Finance Committee and County Board, 1.5 million of that with our local municipalities again. So that is a brief status report on the sales tax revenue. So far, so good. And then finally, the 2018 budget development process. I can tell you both Wendy and I are feeling a little tired because the last three, four weeks it has been incredible heavy lifting with department meeting after department meeting. Uh, I want to thank the chairs and, and county board uh, super, uh, supervisors that joined us in some of those meetings to get a feel for that. Uh, some meetings would last as long as two and a half hours for the larger departments and perhaps as short as 30 or, four min 30 or 40 minutes for the smaller departments. But we really challenge folks. We go through that carefully and our department has done a tremendous job, as I have mentioned before. Uh, after our review at the department level, they go on to the liaison committee level, and then on to the finance committee, and then ultimately on to the full county board. And at this point, we're poised for success. You know, just to set the stage a little bit, 10 years ago, in 2007, our tax rate was $5.64. In 2016, or 2017 rather, it's 565. So it was 564 in 2007, it's 565 this year, and at this point we're anticipating it's going to be $5.45 for the year ahead. Since 2007, the county board has reduced property taxes five times. There aren't many counties across the state that can say that. You have reduced property taxes five times since 2007. And if you look at the last decade and average that for each year on an annual basis, the property tax levy has gone up less than 1%. Less than 1% supporting over 800 employees, 19 departments, 207 programs and services with demands that we know continue to go up for law enforcement, mental illness, helping people with substance abuse, the list goes on and on. So it's rather a remarkable track record, report card, of the county board and our team's success holding the line on property taxes. To put it in further perspective from a standpoint of consolidating or sharing services, in 2007 the total payroll related cost was 70 million of approximately a $154 million budget. Today, 2017, it's $61 million out of a $145 million budget. We've gotten leaner. And for those of you who have been around for a while, and many of you have, we have consolidated a number of programs and departments throughout the county. So I think it's a real credit to you and everyone who works for Sheboygan County on the work we do to establish priorities and the sensitivity we have collectively to holding the line on property taxes, because we all know how important that is to the community. The sheet you have before you is one that the Finance Committee is very familiar with, and again, it gives a very high-end snapshot of all the departments that we've met with what their target is for 2018. And as you know, we established that target as a collaborative effort and communicated as part of our leadership forum and then as our budget kickoff with the Finance Committee. It shows what departments have come in over or under. And you'll note no one has come over target. They all have to hit the target. A few departments came in under their target. And the shining star was Rocky Knoll, $173,000 under their target. 
And to refresh your memory, we didn't provide them with any additional property tax levy. We already challenged them to hold the line. And they not only absorbed any increases, but came in 173 under. So all of that helps provide some additional flexibility for addressing any rescues or what we refer to as requests above and beyond the target for new initiatives or a need in the community that has to be addressed. Or just practical matters such as replacing sheriff's department vehicles and things of that nature. So we're poised for success and we're poised for success because of a lot of hard work collectively from our staff, Wendy and the accountants who have been working with the department heads and their staff, our county board supervisors, everyone pulling on the same rope to achieve our goal of no more than net new construction, no more than an increase in net new construction. The net new construction increase came in at 1.72%, a little more than we anticipated, which was good news. But because we're reallocating operational levy and putting more to reduce our debt service, actually as it stands today, and of course this is a draft and we'll continue to work on this over the course of the next couple of months, as it stands today as you can see, the final tax levy is projected to increase no more than 1.38%, no more than 1.38%, which still would sustain our decade track record of less than a 1% increase each year on average. And the final tax rate would drop from $5.65 to $5.45, which is about a 3.5% reduction. If you have any questions on any of this, please don't hesitate to contact myself or our finance director, Wendy, or certainly our finance committee that is going to do, is going to do a lot of heavy lifting now over the course of the next month or so Again, reviewing every uh, department budget that comes out of the liaison committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Consideration of committee reports, executive committee. Ordinance number three regarding amending county operational provisions relating to office hours, committee recommendation to enact. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for adoption of ordinance number three. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Any questions? All those in favor? Are we on one or three? Three. We're on three. Any other questions? All those in favor? Push aye or nay. Motions approve unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, finance committee. Ordinance number one regarding repealing and recreating chapter three and repealing chapter 55, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Wagon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will move for adoption of ordinance number one. Thank you, Supervisor Wagon. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any discussion or questions? Okay, please push your I button or nay button. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Ordinance number two. Regarding amending chapter 50 of the county code establishing county purchasing procedures, committee recommendation to enact. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Uh, Supervisor Glavin. I'll second that motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Any questions or discussion? Please push your aye or nay button. That motion is approved unanimously. Turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number nine from the Finance Committee. Regarding 2018 five-year capital plan. 
Uh, resolution number nine is referred to the executive committee. Ordinance is introduced. Ordinance number four from the finance committee. Regarding changing supervisory district boundaries 15, 16, and 17 to reflect annexation. Ordinance number four is referred to the executive committee. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. Supervisor Bemis. I move we adjourn. Is there a second to the motion? Supervisor Winkle. I'm sorry, Glavin. Second. Motion second to adjourn. All in favor, press your eye button. Opposed, nay. Yep. We stand adjourned. <laughs>